For the last 20 years, I've been starting and growing businesses. And if there's one thing that I've learned, it's the habits and rituals of people who are destined to become broke or millionaires. People say, I'll just save my way to become a million or you need money to make money. My favorite though, is that people think that the game is rigged. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the biggest mistakes and pitfalls to avoid how you can make a million dollars and more, even if you have zero dollars right now and the exact books you should be reading literally today. And no, you truly do not need money to make money, but more on that later. The fastest and most effective way to build a million dollar net worth is to solve bigger problems. Honestly, this video is geared towards business owners, specifically closing brand owners, if that's you. But even if you're not one, you need to solve bigger problems. Let's define a millionaire real quickly and then we can get into this video. So a millionaire is somebody who has a net worth of a million dollars, not somebody who has ever made a million dollars. That is not a millionaire. You have to actually have a million dollars. So net is what's after taxes, is what's after you've done and paid for everything, not gross. Not what you paid for something, it's what you actually have afterwards. That's the net amount. So now that we got that, we can get into the video. When you can solve a problem, people are willing to pay you in exchange for that problem to be solved. So we work with a lot of clothing brand owners, as I mentioned, and they think that because they are selling clothes, that they are not solving a problem and they are they just may not be thinking big enough or solving an actual true problem in the marketplace validation of the product is a whole other conversation but if you solve a way for people to get to mars that's a much bigger problem than if somebody has ran out of gas on the side of the road both of them are problems both could be businesses we've seen that elon has already started one and a lot of other companies have started little on-the-go gas companies but it does not matter point is you have to solve a problem. Even if you are an employee, which I truly believe 99% of people can become millionaires faster by just becoming an employee versus starting out on their own, but that's a whole nother conversation. The framework is what's stopping them from being a seven figure brain, the framework beyond that. But before we even get into it, let's kind of talk about solving a problem and the three steps that goes into this. The first thing you have to lead with is what is the problem? As a clothing brand owner, what is the problem? Okay, I'm using this as an example. Like I said, whether you're a clothing brand or not, it doesn't matter. It's the same framework. Let's use Cuts as an example. So Cuts is a I would say up and coming brand. And what they did was they designed clothes that were built for different type of men. So some men are 5'9 and 175, and some men are 6'2 and 320. But my point is there's different cuts of fabric for different people. One size of small or medium does not meet or fit all. And so what they did was they solved the problem and made people aware of the problem. People just in the, in the general were like, eh, I can't find good clothes that fit me. I thought they were just gonna have to buy something and just deal with it. But what they did was said, hey, this is a problem. We know a lot of people have. We're gonna create a whole business around it. So they had a problem. They offered their unique solution. Their unique solution was that they are going to create different fabrics and they're gonna create different sizes for people of different sizes as well. So they can find a great medium shirt that looks good, shows off their arm for somebody who's 6'2 and 250 versus the same person who's 6'2 and 175. So now they've created that unique solution. And then what is their life afterwards? So you have step one, problem. Step two, unique solution. Step three, what is life afterwards? You have somebody who's happier, likely healthier, their mental health is better, their physical health is better because they feel better in their own skin. All of those things, you can make a far stretching imagination, right? This person is now able to have kids because they finally found the spouse of their dreams because they finally had the confidence to go talk to the girl. Like you, you, could, you could really just expand this. But my point is there's a problem, there's a unique solution, there's life afterwards. So one thing that most people don't realize is that scratching your own itch is actually the easiest way to grow this. So you solve a big problem, you scratch your own itch. You are the customer in the beginning. Most of the time that I talk to brands, they don't realize that they started a plus size women's clothing line because they were a plus size woman who needed great clothes. Or if they wanted to start a brand that was focused on Florida because they love Florida, they're literally solving the problem for themselves. They wanted great apparel for themselves. They wanted a great brand for themselves. They try to serve everybody and then forget that they're actually supposed to be serving people like themselves. More people are like themselves than they thought was even in the marketplace. And when they go outside of their audience, that's when you start to run into issues. The one thing that every single self-made millionaire has in common is sweat 
equity. They put in the time and effort. Did you know that only 10% of millionaires made their millions in 10 years or less? So I remember moving to Dallas to try to get my first clients. One, I did not grow up here, I grew up in Kansas. I also had no clue who anybody was and I didn't have anything to go off of. The biggest reason that people don't make their million dollars is because that they think that they can make shortcuts, that they do not have to put in the actual sweat equity to make this happen. Now you don't have to do it as hard as what I did because <laughs> it's much easier now, but that doesn't mean you don't have to work hard. Again, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this a little bit later, but just in general, my first client, what I had, what I did was I bought a course by the guy named Ramit Sethi. It was an earn 1K course. And what he did was give me some framework and some scripts because I didn't know how to write any. And I just started finding businesses that I wanted to serve. They had a problem. They didn't know how to market online and I found businesses that I wanted to work with. So I cold emailed this person. She responded back. I remember the drive like it was yesterday. I was literally leaving Rowlett, Texas, drove to Richardson, which for people who don't know, it's about a 25, 30 minute drive, pouring down rain, thinking she was gonna cancel. We met at a Starbucks. I did a bunch of research and just said, hey, this is how I think I could help you grow your brand. Can I do this for free for a week? And if it helps you, we could talk about working together. She said, yes, let's do it. And then the rest is kind of history. But my point is I had to literally invest in a course. I had to send out tons of emails. I had to drive in the rain. I had to do the research ahead of time to hopefully land one client. I mean, honestly, I probably invested 50 hours to land that one client who I think at the very beginning paid me like 500 bucks a month or something. And so you can see the return on investment didn't really match there if you were truly basing this off of dollars. However, what it did allow me to do was make a repeatable process to grow and scale and do this for the future. So hold up just one second. I want to say that if you are a clothing brand owner watching this right now and you want to jump into the specifics of your brand and how to grow up profitably online, you can schedule a free 45 minute strategy session with us. There are limited spots, so go find a time by checking out the link in the description down below. Not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. There's really no shortcut around this. It's hard, sometimes it sucks, but it has always proved to work. So the, one of the biggest reasons that you're not becoming a millionaire today is because you are not reading. Ask yourself right now, how many times have you read a book, right? We'll get into that, but you're not reading. You could use tools like ChatGPT, but honestly, without the discovery of new ideas and perspective, it's hard to grow or even understand what ChatGPT is giving you. Let's give some context and statistics here, right? The average millionaire reads 50 books per year. Average, which means some people read less and some people read more. I want to give you my top three books that have helped me to grow my business and give you my perspective on these books. The first one I will tell you is somebody that I mentioned earlier is a book called I Will Teach You To Be Rich. He's on his second edition. I think that the title seems very misleading or very gimmicky and it, honestly, that's probably good marketing, but a couple of things that you will learn in here, how to automate and how to save and how to invest. He teaches you the fundamentals of actually how to sell, set yourself up for success. And I think, like I said, the biggest thing I got out of it was just automate everything. Take the emotion out of money. There's no reason to have emotion in money. Number two is blue ocean strategy. It's something that we did within our business. So before we marketed to everyone. So the lady I mentioned earlier named Diane, she was part of a fitness group and we did social media marketing. So that the niche we were in was social media marketing for businesses, <laughs> not very not very blue ocean, right? It was a red ocean. There was a lot of blood out there. What we did was we narrowed it down to e-commerce and then we specifically said, we're the best at helping and serving clothing brands. So now we are on a path to become the number one clothing brand marketing agency in the world. We offer the number one most comprehensive program for clothing brand owners, and we are focused on that. So that is our blue ocean strategy. There are people out there, which doesn't mean we are the only one, but it just means that we're on a path to serving one specific audience. Blue ocean strategy allows you and gives you the keys to unlock that audience. So many people try to serve everybody, and then the people who are in the niches are kind of like, yeah, don't do the niches because they're the ones that are capitalizing on the fact that there is a niche. And don't worry, I'm gonna tell you this right now, you're gonna watch this video and then you're gonna be like, dang it, why am I not a millionaire? The reason is because you're going after everybody and nobody knows who you're serving. And the last one here is a new book. It's by an amazing guy named Noah Kagan. It's called Million Dollar Weekend. 
It's about validation and making things happen very, very quickly. Do you have an idea? Can you serve a marketplace? Are you solving a problem? Let's figure it out in 48 hours. If not, move on to the next thing. Figure out your next million dollar idea, validate it. So many people I talk to, they try to go get an LLC or look at inventory or find and invest in something. It's like, no, go sell something. The number one rule in business is that you need to make money to be in business, but then to solve a problem. Can you solve a problem and accept money beforehand? Our program that we built for clothing brand owners, we sold it like four months before we ever even built anything to just see if there was an actual need in the marketplace. Go and validate it. Super, uh, I, I think it's like a, 250 page book, it's very easily digestible, it's very practical, it's a lot of tactics, there's a lot of value in it, so I highly suggest to check it out. It's called Million Dollar Weekend by Noah Kagan. Read these books, and if they don't help move you towards becoming a millionaire, let me know down in the comments below, and I'll give you one doll hair. I see what you did there. If you aren't healthy, you'll never be able to enjoy your millions. The reason you're not becoming a millionaire is because you're not prioritizing your health. We help or aid a lot of clothing brands grow and scale online, but the good percentage of them are younger and believe that hustling is the only way to grow. I believe that. Hustle has become synonymous with work until your eyes bleed, and working hard is extremely important. Don't get me wrong here. But when we first started the business, this is kind of our trajectory. Maybe this is where you were at as well and would tell you what we did wrong and maybe a couple of things we did right. So in the very beginning, we woke up, we did work out, and let's talk about that most of the time, but then we just literally started working and we worked all day and then grabbed lunch. We were slow at this time, so sometimes we'd have a 30 minute lunch break, we'd watch Friday Night Lights. Shout out for people who love the Friday Night Lights uh, TV show, so good. I probably need to rewatch it again, but yeah, if you guys are fans, comment below. Completely irrelevant, but just curious how many fans are out there. So we'd watch that, we'd work till dinner. We never had to make dinner, thank goodness. My fiance at the time, then become now wife, was making us food, otherwise we would have to do that. She'd make us food, we would sit down, we would eat, and then we'd go back to working till about 10, 11 o'clock at night. We did this for years, and I think that honestly, like it helped us create a really good habit, but it also put us in a state of like high alert, and we were young, right? We were 24, 25 years old. So we were young, we could do those things, but thinking back, there was a lot of other things we could have done to make the best use of our time that we were awake. So I think it is a combination of sometimes you do have to put in more time and effort than you normally would to see the fruits of your labor. However, you should never neglect your actual health because if you do that from in your 20s, your 30s are gonna be miserable even if you do have money because you're gonna have so many health issues, back issues, knee issues, fatigue, sleep issues, all of those things start to compound. So your early stages matter a lot. And if you're older right now, it doesn't matter. You can always get back on track. I think something that will probably help you guys in general, and then maybe this is a whole nother video, but this is my morning routine today, which probably looks completely different than what it was 10 years ago, but it's one that works right now, and I think that everybody has to change up their actual routine, but they should still continue to prioritize their health, and health is not just activity, it's also making sure there's diversity within their life, and also, like I said earlier, taking in education, learning, etc. So I wake up, I literally go and run. Uh, obviously I use a restroom to do all those things. You should probably do that. Go and run. Then I do either a Bible or devotional thing, depending on if I ran somewhere else. Sometimes I'll listen to it. Sometimes I will do it on the Bible app. Sometimes I will do it with an actual like physical piece of paper. I've gotten over the fact that I don't have to physically read. Sometimes I can just listen to it. But either way, so that's what I do. Then I'll get to work and sometimes I flip flop those. Sometimes I'll work first, then run, then Bible. Then sometimes I'll do Bible, work, then run. Just kind of depends on the morning. And then there's like family time because I'm helping get drinks ready and, and snacks ready and breakfast ready and everything else ready for the actual day. And then basically send people off or I leave, one of the two, and then actual work. That's it. That's literally all we do in the morning. Now I could go into detail about I wake up at this time and I do these things and whatever else, but I can talk about that a little bit in another video. My point is there's some diversity there. It's very simple. And you're like, well, that's way too simple simple. No, it's something that we can stay a part of, right? So there's education that is a priority. There's a spiritual part of things too. I think that's important. Family time. There's also exercise, which I mentioned, and then work, right? You see work and work here. And then after that, it's just focused on work. But those other things allow me to be more grounded. Some of you guys may not have kids or families and that's fine, use that time for yourself. Some of you guys may have seven kids and you may have to have a little bit more family time. 
that's fine as well. But just find a routine that works for you. Make sure you put in the exercise and getting a good high protein breakfast in the day, in the beginning of the day, and you're gonna set yourself up for a much higher chance of success. Becoming a millionaire is about net worth, not revenue. I don't like dead, but before you write me off as some kind of Dave Ramsey quack, let me explain a little bit and just tell you that the reason you're not becoming a millionaire is because you have debt up to your freaking eyeballs because you do not know how to manage money. Let me explain my perspective to you and then you can apply this to yourself. I measure success based off of the choices that I have the ability to make. Being in debt limits my choices. The only true thing that we know is that the borrower is truly the slave to the lender. Whether you own a home, whether you own a car, whether you have credit cards, whether you bought a yacht, whatever it is, if you do not truly own it, you're at the will and the, the mercy of somebody else. You do not have as many freedoms. You've given up your capital to give away a freedom. Give you some perspective here. Again, I, I'm not shaming anybody. Everybody has their own journey. I'll tell you my story. So what I did was go to college like everybody tells you to do. And at this day and age, I think business probably may or may not be the best route if you need to go to college. You don't need to call, go to college to do that. Doctor, lawyer, etc., teacher, probably makes sense. There's actually a good video by Alex Ramosi who talks about like who you are, not only race, gender, ethnicity, etc. if you should go to college, but also which field of like work you're gonna go into, should you actually go to college? And it's probably the best breakdown that I've seen. So you can go watch that video, highly suggest it. But my dad's story started very simply, which is I went to college, my parents did not have a lot of money growing up, so what happened is I went to college, I had my first couple of years paid for, I actually got some checks, um, but I didn't go into any debt for my first two, three years. Uh, two and a half years. Then I went off to university. First couple years ran track at a small university, small school, and then went to a bigger university and that's where I, I was like, oh sweet. All I have to do is sign on a dotted line and they're gonna give me like $20,000. That's the most money I've ever had at one time in one check. So I did that and then I didn't, I used most of it for school, but then I used it for dumb stuff because I was 20-ish years old and buying dumb things. So anyway, I, I accumulated roughly $38,000 worth of debt for two and a half years or so of school, of school, which I know for some of you guys, you're like, that's not a lot. For some of you guys, that's a crazy amount. But anyway, my wife and I decided that, or I think fiance at the time, she decided to do it on her own and we, or I guess we did it together and then we became debt free. We've been debt free since 2015 and took us about 24, 23 months. But we went as crazy as going 60 miles an hour on the highway to save money on gas. We unplugged unplugged every single electrical outlet because it turns out you lose 10% of your electricity by leaving things plugged in, which is crazy. I didn't know that. You know that when you <laughs> when you go crazy. We literally had a date night once a month, which was 9.99 pizza from Pizza Hut. So we were a little crazy, but what it's done now is allowed us to have that freedom. We went crazy and I think that's what most people don't realize is that that extreme amount of focus is tough. We did it for almost two years and a lot of people can't do that. But to become a millionaire, you have to do things that other people aren't willing to do. And in business, everyone can win on a long enough time horizon. These next two reasons people never make it to a million dollars are the easiest to implement but the hardest to stay true. If you look at everyone who has achieved that million dollar status, it has taken years, most of the time, decades. And if you can change the way you're looking at business and focus on the long game, and now I mentioned right earlier, like whether you're an employer or not, just again, long game, you'll win. It's when you need the money that makes it harder to win. When you think that you need the money for X, Y, and Z, truly check and see if it's a want or a need. But if you need that money today, it's much harder for you to be successful, it's much harder for you to grow, it's much harder for you to hit that millionaire status. So find a game you'll enjoy playing for 10 years and then look up and you'll be a millionaire. <laughs> no. What I mean by that is if you find something that you truly enjoy and you put a decade into it, you can become a millionaire. There's a reason that most people aren't millionaires is because they do it for a couple of years, right? The other options is to do what everybody else does. Do what everyone else says and look for the quick wins and wonder why you're in debt up to your eyeballs with no real business to talk about. The biggest reason people do not become millionaires, in my opinion, is that they do not hire a coach. I'm gonna say this because it may be the first time someone hears this, but every single person who has had success had a formal or informal coach. And success looks a lot different for every person, but let's look at the biggest, right? So in my opinion, Michael Jordan, one of the biggest, had Tim Grover as his personal trainer and Phil Jackson as his actual basketball coach. Coaches, Warren Buffett, 
one of the best and most highly regarded investors of our time had Charlie Munger. Joe Rogan, huge podcaster. He's been in the comedian world. He's reinvented himself. He was in jujitsu. He had, the guy's name is John Jax Mahad Makado. Hopefully I said that correctly. I had to go research that one. Michael Jackson had Seth Riggs. Nobody even ever talks about this guy named Seth Riggs. Super old dude, born in the 30s. Trained Michael Jackson, some old white guy, trained Michael Jackson on how to sing. Probably the most notable singer and notable faces in the world how to coach. Hire someone who has been where you want to be and you'll get there much faster. That seems duh. If somebody's already been where I need to be, they're just gonna show me the way faster? Yes. I spent four years doing it the hard way because I thought I was way cooler. I could figure this out myself. Nobody's ever really figured out how to grow a marketing agency or grow a clothing brand. Yeah, they have. There's no new things under the sun. When we hired our business coaches, it was because they came on our podcast and we're like, yeah, come on, teach us a couple of things. They came on and blew our minds with the way we had no clue. We had blind spots in our business and we had no clue about them because they're blind spots. And just a simple conversation with them, we realized we do not know crap about business. So we hired them in 2017 and we have had coaches ever since then. We even tell our coaches and have our coaches coach our employees because people should always be leveling up and having people tell them where their blind spots are at to grow faster. We have incrementally grown our business over time and I know that we've hit plateaus and then broken through them because we were able to talk through the issues and see it from a different perspective. Hire a coach. I don't care who your coach is. We'd love to be your coaches. Awesome. If you're a clothing brand owner, you can find out more. Check out the link in the description. But no matter what, find somebody who's ahead of you, who's done it before so that you can go faster. You need to hit your goals. And the last thing you want to do is waste a ton of time doing it. It's going to take you 10 years anyway. Don't spend the first five not making any growth or any progress at all. Okay, now that you know what to do or what to avoid in becoming a millionaire, it's time for you to create a marketing strategy that will generate real revenue to actually hit your goals. Go watch this video on exactly what to do next here. All right, y'all have a great rest of your day. I will see you next time. And P.S. Make sure you subscribe.